or I'm kind of back. Let me put it that way. I still have tremendous jet lag brain fog from um, coming all the way from Bali to Singapore, Singapore to Helsinki, and Helsinki to Dallas, and then Dallas to home. And I am so glad to be home. I had an absolutely marvelous time, but I'm ready to be back with Stuart yep. and all of you. <laughs> so a friend of mine asked me to kind of sum up my experience and my, my trip. She said in five words or less. And I said, well, that's practically impossible, but I do like alliteration. So here is kind of how I would describe it. It was um, electrifying. It was exotic. It was tremendously emotional. <laughs> It was energizing and finally and lastly it was exhausting. <laughs> it was very very exhausting and it's going to take me a little while to recover and more importantly it's going to take me a long time to get through all of the photographs and video clips and little stories that I really want to share with you as, as friends because I feel a close connection to you and so many of you have asked so kindly about about my experience there and how it was to be with my son and in a word it was it was exceptional so there is an, there's another e word for you and here's my question of the day um, how many of you have traveled to Asia and what was your experience and if you've got any tips for me about getting over jet lag I would like to know them um, it's what time is it now Stuart it's about two one o'clock in the afternoon. I think it's like noon. It's around noon or yeah. something. But I've been up since three this morning. So if my yeah, eyes begin, yeah. my eyes begin to glaze over, that may be why. And I will have so much more to tell you, and I can't wait to share that with you. But right now, this is our traditional Wednesday walkabout. And what's interesting to me is I, I don't know what I was thinking when I committed to speak to a homeowners association group last night. But I did, and I was only kind of half there. But what we talked about was something that was kind of on my mind, and that is that you never have a second chance to make a first impression. And that, that whole thematic was, was kind of running through my mind as I met my son's new in-laws, as I saw Singapore through the eyes of somebody who hadn't seen it in 28 years and was getting lots of first impressions. I was getting first impressions of their world and they were getting, uh, her family was getting first impressions of my husband, my, my son and, and the rest of my family. But th then I thought that's not true. And so that was my thematic for last night at the Homeowners Association because we really do get a chance, uh, a second chance to make a first impression. And I thought of that when I drove up to my home for the first time after being away for two weeks. Now, as a friend of mine, uh, very happily put up, put it, well, Linda, we kept the heat on for you <laughs> while you were gone. And yes, you did, because today it's going to get up to 98, 98 yesterday. I think we have a break and it gets down to 85 tomorrow. But Stuart, as I understand it, it's been just hot as the Dickens the entire yep. time I've gone without a drop of rain. Yep. Nevertheless, I'm going to say that despite the horrific horrifically hot summer that we've had. I kind of feel, so Stuart, if you'll stand out here if, and you'll, you will look at it. I'll stay close to you so they can okay, hear Okay, you will look at it from the perspective of, of a first impression. Um, you can see that it's kind of holding its own, even at high noon, which is the harshest light of the day. So I, I think it looks presentable. It could look better, but, but it looks as best as I can make it look given the kind of summer that we've had and also the fact that um, I've been gone for two weeks and thankfully and very appreciatively I want to give a shout out to Carrie and Phoebe who, who helped with the watering and everything while I was gone. So that said um, I'm gonna hold off you guys know I'm always thinking ahead but I'm gonna hold off on doing any autumnalizing really until the temperatures break because it would just it just wouldn't be worth it everything will still fry i'll be a slave to the hose and i don't want to do that but i but it's okay because i think it's holding its own while i continue to get over my jet lag and kind of rest up so um so kind of take a gander at things and i want to show you one thing in particular um something i am very excited to do and i'm staying close to the camera because we've got a little mic issue today 
But one thing I'm excited to do is talk about, I guess, some of my favorite signature garden touches and the way I garden, that you and I garden, because we, we kind of all share so much of these garden principles in common, um, through, through, a, um, through a tropical lens. Because it's interesting to see some of these same design principles that we all use in our own gardens, but then how they manifest themselves in a tropical jungle-like environment with lots of rain and high humidity. Uh, but there's, there's one thing that I did notice when I came back, um, and it's, it's in the backyard and I wanna show it to you. But before I show it to you, I, I want you to look at this specimen here which is one of the larger boxwoods that I dug up from the back and I potted here in this kind of cloud form with this open trunk architecture here. And I really love the way it has, it has turned out and it has really been able to withstand these, this hot exposure. Um, it's proven to be relatively drought tolerant and I really love the way it looks. Now I'm showing this to you because of some, some failures that I've got in the backyard and I'm gonna have to think through them. So Stuart, let's just cut this off here and how about we meet again in the back? Sounds good. Okay. So I have to say probably what I am happiest with are these seasonal planters that I did right before I left. They still need some zhuzhing but boy, they have filled out and I think they look pretty spectacular. What do you think, Stuart? They look really good. Okay, so so they did exactly what I wanted them to do and I'll and they probably- still look really good. And they still look good. Yeah. And I, I think, and again, most of the, the cuttings of the coleus and everything came from my garden. I do think that I'm going to expand on this thematic, but again, not until it cools down because it's simply too hot. And you can already see I've got the hose out, and I have to I have to share this this one little funny antidote with you. I was the place that we stayed in Bali was un, it was unbelievable. It really was unbelievable. And yet, looking out at the ocean with this dramatic cliffed view with these thatched umbrella huts and everything, I, I couldn't but laugh because there, marring the image, Stuart, was a great big long hose oh. <laughs> that was right across the expanse of lawn. Because even in Bali, they're having issues um, with a dry summer. So, um, so. True to, true to form, I've got my hose out right now because I've already done my watering for today and I still have more to do. So this area right here, what you guys know that I refer to uh, as kind of the, the living and dining area, the bistro, my, my dining table, all of this is the area that I am so ready to start using as soon as the weather uh, permits because it's just simply too hot right now. And once the temperatures cool, I'll zhuzh this up some more. I'll invite you guys over for a glass of wine or a cup of tea in the bistro, and it will look a lot better. And I'm gonna make it look better and dress it up by expanding on this kind of thematic of this color palette that I've established here. And I will do more of that. But for right now, I was thrilled to see that so many of my coleus cuttings took root that they look happy and these are beautiful again with a little they need a little bit of zhuzhing because i can tell the squirrels have been nipping at the burlap liner that i've got there um probably the biggest disappointment for me in assessing how how things fared while i was gone um was reinforced by a friend of mine that i talked to this morning and she said you know I really thought that I was, I was gonna be able to pull some things through the summer. And you may recall that about, was it three weeks ago, Stuart, we had a little bit of a rain yeah. and a little bit of a break in the temperatures. Yeah. And I think all of us kind of just took a deep breath and we thought, oh, maybe we're on to fall and the worst is over. 
Um, <laughs> and we thought if things had made it through to that point, then we were good to go for the rest of the year. Well, I think we were premature yep. in patting ourselves on the back that, that those things had, had made it through because uh, she was telling me that some things finally just couldn't hang on any longer in this last round of really high temperatures. And that is also true for me. And the overall uh, overarching category of that for me has been all of the boxwood that I transplanted that formerly was in the potage in the form of boxwood balls and things. And I transplanted them a number of different places throughout the landscape. And I was really pretty pleased with how they had performed until this past week. And it was just like, they cried, uncle, they had had enough. I can't do it anymore, ma'am. <laughs> and, and so you can see in this example, the whole front portion of this transplant finally gave it up and died. The back portion still looks pretty good. Over in this one, it's kind of the reverse of that. The front portion of this winter green boxwood still looks good, but the back portion has died. Now I, and, and this is true a number of different places where I transplanted some of these boxwood in pots and in my landscape. So my thinking in the past was, okay, I'll just take these out and I will start all over again with fresh specimens and plant them when the temperatures are a little more forgiving. But this year I'm thinking maybe I won't do that. Maybe I will just take out all of the dead portions, cut it back, leave the portions that decided to commit to me <laughs> and stick with me and and then reward them for their service really give them some tlc really give them lots of compost tea maybe some of that compost that's coming out of my my new loamy countertop composter give them some tlc let them grow out and get fluffy expose more of the architecture of the branching and let them grow up like the one on the front porch that i pointed out to you earlier so Stuart, that was why i wanted to emphasize that on the front porch that large did you get them no i didn't get you them. didn't get them i just well, slapped my belly at least the mosquitoes aren't too bad <laughs> Um, but but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let them grow out, get fluffy, and assume more of that architectural cloud-like form and just remove this part that has died. It looks here like there's, there's a little bit of growth still, still spitting out here at the bottom. But I'm going to give these guys a chance, and I'm going to reward them for their loyalty and for sticking with me through one of the most brutal summers we have ever, ever had. And I'll do the same with this one. And by taking out the dead portion, that will expose the live portion to more light. They will start growing out more in this direction. And I think over time, I can make them look kind of symmetrical. They'll still be evergreen for the winter. And with a good feed next spring, I think they'll come out just fine. And while they may not look perfect, they may not look exactly the way I'd like them to look well, um, one of one of my rules now in this in this new age of tough gardening is embrace imperfection and just do the best with what you have and that's definitely what I'm going to be doing with pretty much everything in my landscape sticking to my signature notes of a very tailored clipped garden I can continue to do that even with dead sections of, of these really traumatized shrubs I can still get the look that I want even in its imperfect way and I am happy to do that let's just take a quick look and then I'm going to wrap it up because Stuart I feel a nap coming on there you go <laughs> um I did do one thing yesterday in my foggy haze out in the garden, and that was that I I tore out most uh, most all of the icicle eggplant because it was really getting overgrown. It was getting white fly, and I tore it out. And I have tons of eggplant, and that is going to be a tease for a video that I'm going to be doing in the future. The multiple ways that that 
eggplant, uh, that specific icicle eggplant has served me this year as a plant, as a fruit in my kitchen, in my interior decor, and it's just a wonderful plant that kept on giving. So it was one of my real success stories for this summer. So the potager doesn't look too bad, albeit it's hot, but aren't we all? So on that note, I'm going to sign off with a very foggy brain. I am so glad to be back. Um, this week is going to be a little bit wonky and again because of my reintroduction into <laughs> in, into Oklahoma and by the way here is a, is a little tidbit that it was very interesting for me to be in Singapore um, during the time of Queen Elizabeth's death and all of the ceremony going on and being in what was once a, once a colony of, of the British Empire, that was very, very interesting to me. So I watched a lot of it in some of my downtime. And, and one interesting factoid, I don't know if you heard this, Stuart, but, but in the endless uh, coverage of it, one little, little snippet that they shared was that Queen Elizabeth loved musical theater and her favorite musical theater production was Oklahoma. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought that was kind of a, a fun little tidbit that I will end this, this, um, this, this little comeback uh, reunion with you guys. I'm so glad to be back. I'm glad to be back at it. And I will. Sh I have so, so much to share with you. This week, it may be that our normal Friday video might go up on Monday. Um, that remains to be seen, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. I'm sure you understand. And thank you for the welcome, the welcome home messages I've been getting. I really appreciate it. Take care. Well, here is my outfit du jour and really has been my outfit of the day for the past two days since I've been back from Singapore and I'm kind of in this liminal state between asleep and awake as I get over my pretty severe jet lag. So I am wearing my summer uniform. I just have on one of my house dresses. I've got on some of my foot form sandals. But here is something that I want to show you because of course, I, I would not be Linda Vodder if I did not buy a pair of hoops when I was in the Orient and I got these in Bali. These are just a pair of silver earrings. Actually, I lied. These I got on Arab Street in Singapore, excuse me. And I, you guys know that I love hoops, so now I have a pair of hoops, hoops from, from, anyway. from Singapore. <laughs> and my sunglasses are Ray-Ban. So there you go, there's my outfit of the day.